Hey, it's Vaughn here at your jazzdrumschool.com YouTube channel. Aloha, hope you're doing well. So I got a request recently in a comment on one of my YouTube shorts. Let's check out the short. Now the comment comes from Augusto Rosa and asking how I tune my drums. And I think what you're asking is I specifically how I tune my bass drum. Now to check out how I tune my drums and how I tune up this really nice uh, Pearl Midtown compact drum set, uh, check out this link below, above and also below in the description. Uh, that'll show you kind of how I tune up this kit. Also, if you haven't already seen the review I've done of this drum set, which I use here in my studio and I use on a lot of my gigs uh, here in Japan, uh, also check out that link above and also below in the description, and that'll kind of give you the ins and outs of how I, uh, I've kind of created my own hardware setup and the symbols that I'm using with it and such a small uh, footprint, but such a nice big sound. So I'm going to show you how I tune my bass drum, and uh, we'll go over the uh, batter side and the resonant side. I'll show you the heads that I'm using and the pitch and the range that I use on my bass drum. All right, let's get into it. All right, so to start out, let me show you the drum heads that I'm using. Uh, I'm using an Ambassador Fiberskin, Remo Ambassador Fiberskin drum head. This thing works really, really well. Uh, I like it for the resonant head. It just has a nice warm tone to it. Uh, now this drum is only 16 inches uh, in diameter. Uh, it's a like 14 by 16, uh, and but it just sounds so warm and so big. And I use this drum, uh, this kit, in concert halls. I use it in recording studios. I use it in uh, you know clubs, live, live music clubs, uh, rehearsals. You name it. Uh, and it just sounds so good everywhere I take it. Uh, now. You might notice on the front of the head, I have a little uh, kind of like a napkin that I folded over and I put some tape over it, some gaffer tape over it. Uh, I just like to mute the resonance of the drum head a little bit. Uh, that kind of helps control the overtones and really lets the warmness of the sound of the drum come through. Uh, so this is about, I don't know, what's that, three, four inches long by a couple inches wide. Um, so anyway, you know, you can experiment with different uh, amounts and thickness and things like that until you find the right uh, sound for you. But I usually put it off to the side as well, um, and that because that's where the overtones are, kind of the edge of the drum, right? Edge of the drum head. So uh, that's what I use for that. Uh, now let's talk about the other side of the drum, and the this is of course the resonant side. Let me show you the batter side. And on the batter side, uh, I'm using an Evans G2 uh, clear, so a two-ply head. Uh, the, the front head, is resonant head, is only one, one ply head, but I'm using an Evans G2, uh, uh, really nice the, really nice drum head. I love G2s, uh, and especially if I'm playing like uh, funk and, and pop or rock or something, I'll put that on my, on my drums. It just gives it a nice... Um, just a clear, projected, uh, more of kind of a wet sound. Really, I really like the sound. But I use the G2 on this drum uh, because I play so many different styles of music with this kit. And if I only used, uh, like, a, a, for instance, an ambassador, a fiber skin on the on the batter side, it wouldn't be this. It wouldn't be the same sound. It would sound real, real jazzy, and I can't, I can't make it kind of fit other styles. I play a lot of Brazilian music. I play a lot of uh, kind of Afro-Cuban stuff. I play, uh, you know, the kind of hip hop, funky stuff, smooth jazz stuff, all kinds of things. And, and this, this head works really, really good for that. Um, it's just very versatile. Uh, again, I put another uh, kind of towel over here to muffle the sound. This one's a little thicker on this side. Uh, again, it's off to the side where the overtones uh, live. So kind of cutting those out. Uh, and that's it. And you'll notice that I don't really put anything in the drum. Uh, there's nothing inside. Uh, now, I recommend that you 
not put things inside your drums uh, because, I mean, unless you really want that sound, that really uh, flat sound. But if you're, especially if you're playing jazz, it's really good to have some resonance, have, have it sing. Uh, and, you know, controlling it a little bit is good, but, you know, definitely let it sing. Uh, and uh, you know, just keep the stuff out of there. Uh, that'll that'll kind of help the, the drum really resonate and really be a melodic voice in your setup. Now, uh, one thing I want to mention about this drum set, um, about this particular uh, bass drum, is that I always put my floor tom inside when I'm traveling. You'll see that in the video about my, my drum kit review. Uh, I nest the floor tom inside the, the uh, bass drum. Uh, so what I end up doing is I leave this drum head on. I never take this drum head off. Uh, and it's always tuned and kind of the way that I like it. Um, incidentally, my tuning, you'll hear, is pretty low, right? It's not a real, it's not a high pitch, it's not a real beboppy kind of sounding bass drum. I like that because again, I'm talking about versatility, right? Uh, I play a lot of different styles of music and if it's only tuned to a bebop sound, it's not, it's not going to help me really, uh, especially when I go to play deep samba stuff, uh, which I love to play. Uh, you really want to have that that low end, and so uh, I find it really works, really really works great um, to kind of tune it kind of down in this this lower range. So anyway, I nest the I nest the floor tom in there, so I always leave this drum head on, and then I put the I take this drum head off on the top, uh, and I'm going to show you kind of walk you through my tuning method and again it's in I'll put the link up here again uh, you can go check out the tuning video you can see how I tune all of my drums okay so I'm gonna go ahead and just take everything down now I'm gonna keep the drum head right I'm gonna keep using it so whenever you're gonna keep a drum head I encourage you not to tune it to detune it uh, like this um, the kind of clockwise or counterclockwise I encourage you to detune it little by little going across Kind of in that star pattern uh, that's really helpful in maintaining the durability of your drum head so i encourage you uh, to 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 detune it that way now what i do is i always start off with just kind of finger tight i go around and i i adjust the tension rods to where they're finger tight and then i take two fingers and i push it down in the middle and i don't know if you could see there's some there's some ripples here okay it's kind of hard to see on a white head but uh, there's some ripples here and what I'm going to do is push down and I'm just going to go around and I'm going to I'm going to just remove the ripples in front of each uh, kind of each tension rod just just tight, tighten until they disappear and that's it this is how I tune the batter side head too but I'm not going to tune that up because I just leave it the same like I was telling you before and remember where you started that's something I forget often which, which, which tension rod did I begin on? And then, oh my gosh. But anyway, now I'm going to go car ready. We got a kind of a nice tone. I mean, it was, there was nothing there and now we've got this nice tone. So now what I do is I take, uh, just touch lightly. Don't push down with your finger, just touch lightly and just go around and tap with your stick. Yeah, this one's, uh, 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 uh. this one's higher. This one's really low. So what we can do is just start off by, I think I like this tone overall. These are kind of the same. These are kind of the same. Usually you're going to get ones that are kind of the same pitch across from each other. So these are kind of low. So let's bring these up. All right. Now keep in mind when you bring, bring these up, the others are also, everything's going to go up too. Now, see, we're almost there. This is a little high. Bring it down. So we're almost there. This one's still real low. I'm not sure why, but. Here, yeah, it's really getting there. This one's a little bit high again. It's a little low. So you just got to go around and adjust it. Bring this down a little bit. This is a little bit low still, but 
we're there pretty much. That's good enough. Um, and uh, it's really a, a, a pitch thing. You've got to get used to hearing pitch. You've got to be able to hear pitch. That's going to be really important for tuning. But the basic idea is you start off by just pushing those two fingers down and you just kind of go around and you, you tighten to get, get rid of all the ripples. And then you've already got kind of a basic tuning. From there, it's a lot easier. It's, it's the easiest way I know. And I've tried all of them. So uh, you don't need a drum dial. You need all this equipment. You just, just use your ears, train your ears, and you know you can do it. This is a little high. Let's bring it down. And as long as it's in the ballpark, I'm okay. That's pretty good. It's not bad, you know. If I wanted to, I could bring it up more. But then I go and hit the other side, the batter side. It's got a nice tone to it. Blah, 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 blah. You know, it's got a nice, nice blend from the, the resonant side head and the batter side head. So, you know, just experiment with what, you know, what you like. But, you know, it's the whole idea is just get them kind of in the same, like kind of like a strike zone in, in baseball. You know, get them at strike zone and just, and just go with it. One thing I'm going to say also is that when I'm checking my tension, it's, uh, it's checking my, my pitch, especially in the recording studio, I'm going to listen to where the bass is playing because I'm always playing with uh, acoustic bass players and and you really don't want your bass drum frequency to be canceling out the the bass the bass sound you know um, that's a, that's something that can happen pretty easily uh, so kind of like it's like a phase thing really you've got this these two things are in the same uh, pitch range and they kind of cancel each other out so I try to stay either a little bit below where the bass is or a little bit above where the bass is. And believe it or not, every wood bass has a different kind of sound to it. And some of them have that deeper, deeper sound and some of them don't. So, and even the bass player will choose to EQ their bass differently too. So, you know, you really want to listen and find out where your bass drum fits with the bass player. Now with regard to the tuning between the batter side head and the resonant head, I generally will tune the batter side head a little bit lower than the resonant side. Uh, and that is because uh, I like a, a deeper sound, you know, when I'm, when I, when I'm hitting, the, hitting the drum. I, I like the, the batter side to be a little lower and give me that little bit kind of a funkier sound to it. Uh, now the resonant side, I like to be a little higher because I like it to resonate. I like it to kind of project out. So just, you know, an idea, it certainly doesn't mean that that's the only way to do it, but just the way that I do it, and it works really, really great with a lot of different styles of music. Well, now we're back in business here, got the kit back together, and I hope the video was helpful for you. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. I'd love it if you'd subscribe. Uh, be sure to like the video if you like it. That helps it scurry around YouTube a little easier, and be sure to drop that comment as well. I'd love to connect with you and uh, let me know if this video was helpful for you in tuning up your bass drum. Also, let me know if there's any other kind of video you'd like to see here on my channel. Now, if you haven't already checked out my courses at jazzdrumschool.com, I encourage you to do so. Lots of great content over there from playing brushes to learning how to trade fours and eights to advanced kind of drumming concepts, uh, independence, drumming independence, all kinds of goodness over there. So I encourage you to check it out at jazzdrumschool.com. I'm going to leave you with a little bit of playing, and as I always say, keep swinging, my friend.